If you're an Android user who's ever misplaced your keys, wallet, or other valuable items, then you know the frustration of not having a built-in tag tracking system like we see with Apple's AirTags. Thankfully, we won't have to worry about that any longer as Google's Find My Device network launched in April 2024, followed up by the first wave of compatible trackers. This past weekend, I've been testing out the Pebble Bee Clip, Card, and Tag trackers to a great degree, so in this video, I wanted to show you how it works and go over what you need to know before picking one up. Before before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're visiting us for the first time. Here at 9to5Google, we cover all things Google, Android, and Gemini, plus some fun stuff in between. If you love what we do and want to take things a step further, check out our channel membership where our members get some pretty nice perks like exclusive wallpaper packs. We just released the June pack a few days ago, which I think looks great, but there's a decent backlog as well if you want to see what we've released in the previous months. Check it out for yourself, we would certainly love to have you. And getting right into it, let's take a look at the Pebble Bee lineup of Android trackers. At this time, there's only two companies that have released trackers officially compatible with the Find My Device network, that being Pebble Bee, which is what we have here, and a company called Chipolo, although we know a few other brands are on the way. For the most part, both function very similarly as their Bluetooth trackers that offer various shapes to suit your needs. Pebble Bee has a bit more variety as they have a clip, which is great for keys, bags, or anything with a loop attached to it. There's a card model with a slim profile ideally meant for wallets, and a tag option, which I think is probably the most versatile of the three, while Chipolo only offers a card and clip version. Another difference is battery life as well. Pebble Bee's clip tracker is rated for 12 months of use, the card is rated for 18 months of use, and the tag is rated for 8 months of use. Admittedly, that is a shorter lifespan than the Chipolo that is rated for 2 full years on the card and 1 full year on the tag, but they are not rechargeable, only replaceable, unlike the Pebble Bee tag that uses a USB-C connector or a proprietary magnetic charger for the others included in the box. To me, that is a make or break decision. Something just feels so wrong about buying something you know is on a limited lifespan even if it is replaceable and I'm not getting anything that isn't rechargeable, but hey, to each of their own. Moving on from hardware, let's talk about how these Find My Device trackers actually work. Unlike Apple's AirTags, which utilize ultra-wideband radios on top of Bluetooth for precise location, both Pebble Bee and Chipolo rely on a crowdsourced network of Android devices via Bluetooth. Basically, when a lost phone, tracker, or tag is nearby any Android device participating in the Find My network, they will securely relay the location to you for retrieval. In crowded areas, the network becomes much more powerful as multiple devices can detect the lost item and better aggregate the data to pinpoint its whereabouts. As a user, you do have a fair bit of control on how your device is used in the network. You can choose to have it participate only in high traffic areas like airports or shopping malls perhaps. You can be active in all areas, either high or low traffic. You can choose not to participate but still get the last known location data or not participate at all. If you do want to be a part of it, I think it's important to know the privacy stance here. From what we're told on Google's Find My Device support page, the network you uses end-to-end -end encryption backed by the same technology Google's password manager uses to keep passwords secure, which means the location of your items are private, even from Google. And Google does mention they are unable to identify you when your Android device shares the location of a detected item, all of which are just good to know on hand. When it comes to the actual tracking capability on the user's end, the Find My Network offers several features. For one, we have location tracking, of course, where you can see the general location of the item in question on a map. If you're within Bluetooth range, you should see a UI option called Find Nearby, and in this mode, you can play a sound and will also show an empty shape that will gradually fill as you get closer to the tracker. If you're outside of Bluetooth range, you will have the option to set the device into loss mode where it will notify you when the network picks it up, alongside the ability to add contact info if it is found where a good Samaritan can tap their phone against the tracker in order to get in touch with you. This tracker does support labels as well, so you can list the item as a bag, bike, camera, etc. for easy identification. Lastly, within the Find My Device app, you do have the option to share the tracker with another person, maybe a family member or a group you're traveling with so everyone can keep track of the items you're looking for. There are a handful of smaller, last minute inclusions I didn't get the chance to talk about yet, but felt it would be important at least to mention. For starters, all three Pebble Bee trackers are IPX6 water resistant, which basically means it can handle being sprayed with strong jets of water like a shower head or hose up to three minutes. Or in other words, they aren't waterproof but water resistant to a reasonable level versus Chipolo on the other hand, which is rated slightly lower at IPX5. In theory, both should be fine but worth keeping in mind. 
The on paper Bluetooth range is another interesting comparison as well. For the clip and card, those are rated at 500 feet or 152 meters for our friends that use the arguably inferior metric system, which I'm just kidding by the way. While the smaller tag has a range of 300 feet or 91 meters compared to both of Chipolos that top out at 200 feet or 60 meters. Probably the biggest difference between the two, at least to me, is the ability to recharge the Pebble Beach trackers. I think I had talked about this a lot earlier, but the Chipolo battery cannot be replaced on the card, but their clip can be replaced. And of course, the entire Pebble Bee lineup can be charged either with USB-C or a magnetic charging mechanism. Chipolo does offer a 50% discount at the two year mark for a new tracker if you register on their website, and they also have a recycling program, which is great, don't get me wrong, but the tech enthusiast in me hates the idea of not being able to recharge at my convenience, so do with that what you will. Finally, I'd consider setup to be a great feature to mention too. For initial setup, you have the option to scan the QR code attached to the tracker when you first pull it out of the box. Scanning that QR code will bring you to their website where Pebblebee will walk you through how to turn on Find My Device if you haven't already. For those that have activated the Find My Network, you can just slowly double press the Pebblebee logo to initiate the fast pair prompt, or you can manually pair by going to the Connected Devices tab after double clicking the logo too. To me, I found the fast pairing process to be super fast, although if you have a ton of devices laying around here like I do, I find the fast pairing feature has a difficult time detecting what's actually being used in my hand at that time. So at the end of the day, is it worth picking up these Pebble Bee trackers and start using Google's Find My Network? This is just a brief impression, but I'd say they're offering a comparable system to Apple's AirTags with no huge compromises from what I can see. I think the ultra wideband connectivity would have been preferred. I mean, it's much newer, more accurate technology, but I think Bluetooth was the right choice considering these trackers support Android 9 and above, so it probably gives them the widest variety of compatibility. And they're also pretty affordable, I'd say. The card and tag are on sale for $35, while the clip goes for $30, which I feel is more than reasonable. If I had to nitpick about any of these trackers though, I would say I wish some of the design had that elegance factor. The AirTags look gorgeous and are made out of stainless steel, versus the third party ones on Android look so utilitarian. In the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter what they look like, as long as they work well, which I think they do, but let me know your thoughts down below. After this video, are you thinking of picking some up or waiting until Google makes a first party one maybe? Leave a comment and let me know, but in the meantime guys, I'm getting out of here. Before we do, it's time for my favorite segment of the video where we give a huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. The support of every one of you means a lot to us here at 9to5Google as we do our best to deliver high quality Android content, and for that I am so thankful to have you all. Don't forget to grab those exclusive wallpapers for June since they are out now, and with that, Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google, and I will see you in the next one.